in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. So indeed, as we gather as God's people, as we pray in a particular way on this kind of transition Sunday, the end of winter, apparently, and the beginning of spring, and as we honour and celebrate our fathers who are among us, let's bring all of those intentions before our God as we first acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way of love and service. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to worship you with pure hearts. Christ, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, the just will live in your presence. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And we worship our God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, Take notice of the laws and customs that I teach you today and observe them, that you may have life and may enter and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You must add nothing to what I command you and take nothing from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God just as I lay them down for you. Keep them, observe them, and they will demonstrate to the peoples your wisdom and understanding. When they come to know of all these laws, they will exclaim, No other people is as wise and prudent as this great nation. And indeed, what great nation is there that has its God so near as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call to him. And what great nation is there that has laws and customs to match this whole law that I put before you today? The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. Lord, Who shall dwell on your holy mountain? He who walks without fault. He who acts with justice and speaks the truth from his heart. Just will live in your presence of the Lord. He who does no wrong to his brother, who casts no slur on his neighbor, who holds the godless in disdain, but honors those who fear the Lord. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. He who keeps his pledge, come what may, who takes no interest on a loan and accepts no bribes against the innocent, such a man will stand firm forever. Live in the presence of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. It is all that is good, everything that is perfect, 
which is given us from above. It comes down from the Father of all light. With him, there is no such thing as alteration, no shadow of a change. By his own, own choice, he made us his children by the message of the truth, so that we should be a sort of first fruits of all that he had created. Accept and submit to the word which has been planted in you and can save your souls. But you must do what the word tells you and not just listen to it and deceive yourselves. Pure, unspoilt religion in the eyes of God our Father is this, coming to the help of orphans and widows when they need it and keeping oneself uncontaminated by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Father gave us birth by his message of truth that we might be as the first fruits of his creation. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands. He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandments of God in order to keep your traditions. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say that if anyone tells father or mother, whatever support you might have have had from me is Corban, that is, an offering to God, then you no longer permit doing anything for father or a mother thus making void the word of God through your tradition that you have handed on. And you do many things like this. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand, there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, His disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, Then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart, but the stomach, and goes out into the sewer? Thus he declared all foods clean. And Jesus said, It is what comes out of a person that defiles, for it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fortification, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, if you were following along right now, you would have noticed I didn't read the the text exactly as it was set in the lectionary. I read the full passage rather than 
This odd kind of selection that the lectionary gave us. And it's interesting, the bits that the, the church leaves out are about condemning those who do things by tradition and nullify the word of God, which is an interesting kind of, of thing. Now, when we get to a teaching like this, and it's very unusual in the Gospel of Mark to hear something like this. Maybe some of you have seen a red letter Bible. It's a version of the scriptures where in the Gospels, the words of Jesus are written in red ink so that you can easily see which are the, the important bits, which are the words of Jesus and what's the commentary, what's the other sections. And until this point in the Gospel of Mark, there's been mostly black text because it's mostly Mark describing the kinds of things that Jesus does, this healing, the way he moves about, the way that he offers teaching, but it hasn't focused on the actual teaching of Jesus. So if you've been reading along, this is the first time you get any chunk of red text at all in the Gospel of Mark. There will be a few more places, but this is the first time you get a chunk of red, a chunk of the actual teaching of Jesus. So clearly something is important that is happening here. And so I think it's good to, to read it in full, to hear the words of Jesus. Now, we also need to, to make sense of when he's talking about things like the washing of hands and cups and pots and kettles, you know, we will have certain images to the, that we come to mind when all of that is, is happening. But we need to remember the context from the Hebrew Scriptures and from the Jews at the time. Now, when you read from the middle of the book of Exodus until the end of the book of Deuteronomy, which is where we drew our first reading from Deuteronomy today, over those three and a half books, you find what is the, the mitzvah, the, the commandments of God. And if you are carefully going through and beginning to count the different commandments, you find a total of 365 prescri prescriptions, things that you shall not do, things that you know, we're commanded against doing. So you know, don't murder, don't kill, all those, those kinds of commandments are there. But in addition to those, there's another 248, which apparently was the old traditional way of, of understanding the number of bones in the human body, 248 things that you shall do. So prescriptions, not prohibitions, but prescriptions, things that you shall do. Keep holy the Sabbath day, honor your father and mother, a good commandment to remember on Father's Day. So in total, 365 plus 248, 613 of these commandments. But when the people of God lost everything at the time of the exile, so 600 years before the time of Jesus, when the Babylonians had swept in and destroyed both the city of Jerusalem and the temple, there was this movement that began to develop from about the 5th century of the development of what we now hear and know as the scribes. And the scribes began to look at the commandments and the, the teachings and realize that even though there are 613 of these things across those three and a half books of the Old Testament, they're, they're really not full enough. They're not complete enough. You know, they tell you to keep holy the Sabbath day, but it doesn't give you all of the descriptions about how to do that. There were prohibitions against divorce, but almost nothing about well, how do you live marriage well? And what were the grounds? All of that was kind of left vacant. And so the scribes began to fill in the gaps, begin to provide other teaching, oral teaching, traditions that began to complete the law. None of it was written down until another two or 300 years after the time of Jesus in a Jewish text that we call the Mishnah. And so that's where all of these different interpretations that the scribes developed began to be actually compiled and written down. So until this point, 
all that we have is traditions, oral teaching. So you don't find any of these rules or regulations in the scriptures, but it was part of the, the ethos, part of the, the air that everyone breathed. And so the scribes taught all these things, even though they didn't actually come from scripture. So, for example, the washing of hands. This wasn't about hygiene. It wasn't about providing descriptions. You know, we've all become very good at washing our hands, hopefully, after COVID. You know, we all know how to, to kind of wash our hands. But at that point, you, and it was still a pretty dry kind of place, so you didn't waste a whole lot of water, but you would take a small measure of water. It was defined as a, a cup and a half of water. And so you first, you would hold your hands upright and either yourself, one hand and the other, or your host would pour just that small amount of water over the fingers until it ran down to the wrist. So that was what that description of the, the hand was about. And then you would grab the fist of the other hand and you would smash it into your wet hand. And then with the, your right hand was now wet, you would use the fist of your other hand to, to wash it. Now, both of your hands have been wet, but they're still ritually unclean. So you then need to do a second washing again with the ritually clean water that you would take from the stone jars that are kept for this purpose. And so the same measure of water you would have, but now your hands are down. And so you begin at the wrist and just will pour water so that it dripped off the fingers. And after the second cleansing, your hands were now clean. Voila, it's all good. And so you were, again, not by hygiene, but this was just this sense that we need to be clean and was part of that rule, part of that system of the scribes to invite people into, into this way of cleanness and life. And all of it was about trying to avoid the exile again, trying to avoid that kind of punishment that they believed God had inflicted upon them because they hadn't been faithful to the commandments, to the covenant, to the desire of God to bring forth a people. It was one response, one way of trying to be faithful to God. But Jesus is saying, look, this is not nearly enough. This is not what the, the rules or the regulations are about. You know, Jesus would have agreed with Moses in our first reading. You know, Moses is almost in this ecstatic kind of place, you know, pondering upon the laws of God, saying, look how wonderful they are, how amazing it is that God has called us to receive these laws, these rules, these regulations to be bestowed upon us. You know, what other people have a God that is drawn so near to us that he's able to be revealed in these teachings, in these rules, in these regulations? You know, what kind of people are able to experience the depth and the presence of God like we can? because God has drawn near. But Jesus is saying that that hasn't really been fulfilled and achieved. But what we can do is understand why the rules existed in the first place. You know, what were they trying to offer to us? So often we've just got caught up in the rule itself and not understood what it was trying to achieve, what that purpose was about. You know, what was this offering to us? A new way of living. And so Jesus is describing this possibility of living in the kingdom, living in that grace of Eden. It's always going back to creation, always going back to that first experience of being loved into life, being called into that freedom. And that that's what we're invited into. That's we're able to experience this presence of God not by the washing of our hands, not by fulfilling outward observances, but by this slow transformation of our hearts, by recognizing that that's the source of true evil. It's when we fail to recognize the presence of God in other people, when we deny someone, when we condemn someone by the color of their skin or by the, the, the objectives that they are living by, rather than by this eternal gift of God's grace and God's truth. We're invited into this deeper reality of surrendering to God, of being called more fully and more completely into his love. So let's indeed embrace the gift of God to invite us into freedom, to invite us into his life, and to recognize that he's inviting us 
to be the people that he's called us to be. He loves us so much that he wants us to find this freedom and this life that we can only find in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, on this Father's Day, with confidence in God's love and mercy, let us intercede for the world. That with a pure heart, the church will observe the commandments of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That governments will be guided by God's law and promote justice and fairness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who live through deceit and dishonesty will change their ways and live in the truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That victims of evil and abuse will be shown kindness and compassion, and that we will remove obstacles that prevent us from conforming our lives to Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will find healing and comfort, including our sick fathers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed will reach their eternal reward, including our fathers and father figures. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of justice and mercy, the Lord guides our hearts in the path of holiness. Hear our prayers, and may our words be matched by our loving deeds. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and like a thing in hands, come for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, and humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Lord, we ask you to receive us and please with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The second Eucharistic prayer for reconciliation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change your hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries may join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. 
He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation that Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the cup of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he bring us to and keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Brian, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, especially Laurie McMcGuinness, Bring us to share with him the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's turn and share the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our dads and our fathers mold us, shape us, and love us. But they're not always portrayed that way. In our sitcoms and our commercials, dads are imaged as clumsy and even clueless. In our movies and our media, fathers are viewed as emotionally distant and as secondary caregivers. Sometimes they're displayed as lacking compassion or sympathy or understanding. But that's not the story we see in our church. Over and over and over, we see men who are breaking the mold. We see fathers who love their children with passion, with care, and with purpose. We see dads who work harder than ever in a complex world to allow every member of their family to flourish. We see grandfathers who are actively involved in the lives of their children and their grandchildren. We see men without any biological children of their own who mentor and disciple the next generation of young people. They're at the school play. They're reading the Bible and praying at bedtime. They're real men who are trying their best to love their wives just like Jesus loves his bride. Do they fail? Of course they do. But by the grace and power of God, they get back up and they try again. They're not perfect, but they're surrendering themselves as they become all that God wants them to be. So on a day like today, on this Father's Day, we just want you to know that we see you and we are grateful for you. Thank you, Dad, for everything. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we ask you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, today we ask you to bless our fathers for the many times they reflected the love the strength, the generosity, the wisdom, and the mercy that you exemplify in your relationship with us, your children. We honor our fathers for putting our needs above their own convenience and comfort, for teaching us to show courage and determination in the face of adversity, for challenging us to move beyond self-limiting boundaries, for modeling the qualities that would turn us into responsible, principled, and caring adults. Not all our fathers, lived up to these ideals. Give them the grace to acknowledge and learn from their mistakes. Give us the grace to extend to them the same forgiveness that you offer to us. Help us to resist the urge to stay stuck in past bitterness, instead moving forward with humility and peace of heart. We all ask your blessing on those men who served as father figures in our lives when our biological fathers weren't able to do so. May the love and selflessness that they showed us be returned to them in all their relationships and help them to know that their influence has changed us for the better. Give new and future fathers the guidance they need to raise happy and holy children, grounded in a love for God and other people. Remind these fathers that treating their wives with dignity, compassion and respect is one of the greatest gifts that they can give their children. We pray for our fathers who have died and passed into the new life that have been now welcomed into your loving embrace, and that our family will one day be reunited in your heavenly kingdom. In union with St. Joseph, whom you entrusted with your son, we ask your generous blessings on these fathers today and every day, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the God of goodness bless you and fill you with his peace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's go in peace to announce the gospel of the Lord.